Point to the coefficient. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. My name is Sanjay Markun, and I will be coordinating today's webinar. First, I want to do a quick check, so please just write down in chat if everybody hear me well. Okay, great. So now we can start. This is SIJ Acroni's first ever webinar series, and we will start with cutting recommendations. Next on the list are welding and bending recommendations, which will be held in the middle and the end of October. Also in the beginning, um, let me say that we have some technical issues with the video, so uh, this webinar will be shown only in audio mode. So. This is the second in the series of three webinars dedicated to our SIDUR and CMAX brands. You can address your questions during webinar in chat, and we will address them later at the end of the webinar session. A recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website. So let's do a quick review of SAJ Acroni. SAJ Acroni is a producer of flat rolled steel products. We are a part of SIJ Group, which is the largest steel producer in Slovenia. SIJ Group is a vertically integrated business structure that ensures complete control from scrap to final product. At this point, I would like to introduce you to our main presenter, Mr. Andres Kumauts, which is our research engineer for SIDUR and CMAX steel segment. So thank you very much for this introduction. Uh, the, the development process of each particular steel, of course, is not finished uh, once we get proper mechanical and microstructural properties of the steel. So SIDUR and CMAX steel grades are both part of construction steel grades. And for construction steel grades, it is expected to have a short bendability and weldability. But before those two processes, the material is also cut to pieces from which we produce different type of constructions, for, for example, extendable lifts and wounds, trailers or excavator buckets. So my name is Andres Kumaut and I'm working as a research engineer for carbon steels and also a research engineer for welding technologies. I will present you a chain of three webinars from the field of processing wear resistant steels and high strength low alloy steels with SIJ Acroni commercial names, SIDUR and CMAX. So SIDUR and CMAX steel grades, they both have high yield and tensile strength besides sharp impact toughness in the range of conventional construction steels. Those properties are achieved with special chemical composition and through carefully controlled hot rolling and heat treatment process. Those two factors are also a reason that more care is necessary for cutting, welding, and bending operations to be done safely. In nine out of 10 occasions, high strength low alloy steels are also com combined with conventional construction steels like S355 or S235 grade. And also in these cases, all the instructions which will be given and discussed today should be taken into consideration. As seen from this figure on this slide, high quality of the, of the end product is defined by the right choice of steel in combination with proper technological steps during the manufacturing process in the workshop. So the cutting, welding, and bending operations should be done according to the producer's instructions. I know that regarding on the equipment which is used in the workshop, uh, some adjustment, of course, are, are always necessary. 
SIJ Acroni produces three main grades of high strength low alloy construction steel grades, which are made according to the requirement of international standard. Those grades have commercial names CMAX 700, CMAX 900, and CMAX 1000, with the corresponding yield strength of 690, 890, and 960 megapascals. Thickness and width depends on the quality of the steel. Also, other grades from this international standard with a little bit lower yield strength are available according to the agreement with the customers. For example, for really small or special orders, we can also produce S500 grade or S550 grade. Those grades are typically used for the application where strength to weight ratio is of great importance. For example, we can produce extendable boom lifts, trailer chassis, frames of the yellow good and agricultural machinery. First, we have to make a short overview also of our SIDUR steel grades. So SIDUR is SIJ Acroni commercial name for wear resistant steels. We are producing steels with the nominal surface hardness from 300, 350, 400, 450 to 500 Brinil. All those grades are delivered in quenched or quenched and tempered condition with martensitic microstructure. Under the name SIDUR 3401, we also sell the 12% manganese austenitic grade, which is also known as the Hatfield steel. Also for SIDUR grades, the maximum plate thickness depends on the grade. So typically those grades are used for wheel loader buckets, excavator buckets, mining equipment, tipper boxes, and different hydraulic equipment which is used for yellow wood machinery. At this point, I have to give you one important information. So internally, in our daughter company, SAJ Electrode Senice, we are also producing welding or filler materials in the form of the coated electrodes for stick welding and metal or cord wires for gas better arc welding. They are all necessary to weld our plates into final products. As I already say, today webi today's webinar will be uh, will will discuss the cutting recommendation for SIDUR and CMAX steel grades. The webinar will be divided into six main parts. So, the first part we will go through the methods which are typically or mostly used for trimming of the plates into smaller pieces. So, cold cutting and thermal cutting processes will be discussed. We will also point out the importance of preheating of plates prior to thermal cutting process. Each individual process also has an effect on edge quality, and therefore, we will also go through this part. When we are talking about grades, which also have high carbon content and therefore high carbon equivalent value, also some design considerations should be taken into serious consideration. At the end of the webinar, some tables with recommended preheating and maximum interpass temperatures will be discussed. But before we start, I have to tell you that all those tables with recommended temperatures are also included in, into the technical data sheets of our products and are really available on our webpage or can be sent to our customers by our sales department through technical support team. So we will start with the methods which are used for cutting of our grades. SIJ Acroni produces, produces abrasive, very resistant steels like SIDUR and high strength, low alloy construction steel grades, CMAX, only in the form of the quarto plates with the maximum width of 2, 2 meter and a, and a half. So due to this reason that the final shape is in the form of a plate, our customers use different cutting processes. Among, uh, among cold cutting processes, we can choose between, let's say, abrasive water jet cutting or shear and saw cutting. 
Among thermal cutting processes, we recommend to use plasma cutting machines or oxyfuel cutting or laser jet cutting machines. Of course, each of the mentioned process has some advantages, some disadvantages, which are necessary to be explained in the next part of the webinar. So we will first go to the abrasive water jet cutting. Abrasive water jet cutting is a cold cutting process where high speed water jet with dispersion of small but very, very abrasive sand particles cuts through the plate. The main advantage, advantage of this process is that we do not have any heat affected zone on the cut part and therefore it is highly recommended process to be used on high carbon equivalent value grades. During abrasive water jet cutting, there is also no overheating of the material near the cutting line and therefore we have no microstructural and mechanical changes in the cutting region. So just pure base metal. With this process, we can cut almost any metallic material. From environmental point of view, we have to say that it is also a green technology due to the closed loop water system and due to the recyclability of the scrap material. We, we all know that production costs are relatively high. Due to the low cutting speed, the productivity and output of this process is also reduced. With the thickness of the plate, also the accuracy of the cut decreases. The process itself is suitable only for cutting on horizontal planes and due to the water which is used for cutting, some rust may appear on the surface if the parts that are cut from the plate are not cleaned immediately after cutting. The quality of the cut edge can be divided, let's say, into the five classes, where the class Q5, so this is the last picture on the right side, presents the highest level of cut edge quality. The next widely used cold cutting process is shear or saw cutting. The use of shear and saw cutting process is limited only to line cutting. So due to the process limitations, it is impossible to cut circular shapes. And when the mechanical properties increases, particularly hardness, the operators have to change the band saw or cutting knives for successful operation. For effective and productive cutting, it is also necessary to use emulsions, which are, I think, mostly water-based. As it was already explained for the water jet cutting, during shear or saw cutting, we do not generate any heat affected zone on the cut part. And this is also the main advantage of this cutting process. In the next part of the webinar, we will try to explain something about the thermal cutting processes. So nowadays, plasma cutting is the most frequently used thermal cutting process for trimming of the CDUR and CMAX plates. We can also say that most of conventional construction steel grades are cut to smaller pieces using plasma cutters. Main advantages are, let's say, low equipment cost, high cutting speed, especially when cutting plates with moderate thickness, let's say, between 6 to 30 millimeters. Cut parts have high quality edges also. And on the market, you can also choose between different portable units for on-site work. Depending on the steel quality and the thickness of the plate, the operators should adjust or set the parameters, which can then be repeatedly used over the next series. Maintenance costs are relatively low for this cutting process. As all other thermal cutting processes, also for plasma cutting, the presence of heat affected zone on the cut parts is the main disadvantage. So the higher the carbon and the higher the carbon equivalent value, the more problems can we expect on the cutting edges. Maybe I can just tell you that instead of more prob problems, we can say that more care is necessary when, when doing a uh, plasma cutting operation. The process is, I think, extremely stable to the thickness of approximately 60 millimeters. 
The process can also be used for trimming of the plates to smaller sizes where the edge quality is not that important. So, with proper settings of parameters, we can cut through the plates with the thickness, let's say, over 120 millimeters. From environmental point of view, the process itself is noisy and generates cutting fumes. So, therefore, I really recommend to use ventilation equipment uh, in your workshop. Due to, the due to the cutting with plasma arc, I also suggest for the operators to use wear uh, or to, to, to wear eye protection. We have to point out also the importance of the plasma cut edges. So if plasma cutting is used directly for cutting of final shapes, so not only for trimming of the plates, it is necessary to take care on cut edges. So the quality depends mostly on the equipment which is used, like, for example, cutting gases that are used, thickness of the material, and also steel grade. It is a combination of factors which should be taken into consideration and they shall be optimally adjusted. On the picture below, it is also shown how the optimal final cut edge should look, look like. So this is the, the picture on the bottom of the slide. So-called separate cut, this is the picture on the top left, appears when the nozzle is too far away from the plate. And if the cutting speed increases, the cut lines also change the shape from the straight line to the circular or spline shape. The next process among, among thermal cutting processes is oxyfuel cutting. So oxyfuel cutting is, I think, among the oldest processes used on industrial level to cut construction steel grades. It can be compared to plasma cutting process regarding the portability of the equipment and heat affected zone properties. Also for this process, the cutting speeds are high and with proper adjustment of the cutting parameters like burn gas flow, oxygen flow, and cutting oxygen flow, there is almost no limit with the thickness. Special care is also recommended when using this process for high hardness grades, for example, CDUR 500 grade of high thickness. This grade also has relatively high carbon equivalent value. Due to the decomposition of the burning gas, we can expect some problems on the cutting edges due to the hydrogen and induced cracking. So from my point, from my point of view, if possible, we recommend to use plasma cutting instead of oxyfuel cutting. If the cutting torch can be adjusted also in angular direction, we can cut also the welding edges directly on the plates. One example of this is shown on the picture on the middle and on the picture on the right side of the slide. In smaller workshops, uh, we mostly use acetylene as the burning gas due to the highest temperature of the flame. On industrial level, where we have the pipeline supply of the burning gas, different other gases are used, like propane or butane, but they both have lower temperature of the, of the flame. So regarding on the burning gas, which is used for cutting and thickness of the plate, it is necessary to choose the right burning gas nozzle. So sometimes if you have maybe some problems with cutting, the reason could also be in the wrong burning gas nozzles, nozzle se selection. Laser jet cutting is, I think, for sure, the most widely used process in modern, modern workshops. In the last decade, we can choose between numerous laser cutting machines. Among the processes presented until now, the laser cutting achieves the highest cutting speeds, and it is particularly suitable to cut high strength, low alloy steels with the thickness between or up to 25 millimeters. In this range of thickness, we can get high quality of the cut edges with accuracy of approximately plus minus 0.1 millimeter. 
If we have separate cuts, there is also no need to change tools. Also, I think equipment costs are not that high, but it is recommended to have trained operators in order to increase the quality in correlation with quantity to the limit of this process. Compared to plasma cutting, also during the laser cutting, some fumes can be generated and therefore it is a need to use the ventilation units. I have to tell you maybe the main disadvantage. It is really hard to say what is the main disadvantage. From my point of view, maybe the cost of equipment if we compare those costs with other thermal cutting processes. And special care also must be given to the maintenance of the beam source and to the lenses. When we are talking about heat affected zone on the cut parts after the laser jet cutting, we have to point out the properties of this heat affected zone. Yes, this heat affected zone, maybe some of you think that it is not present on the part, but it is. This heat affected zone is present on the part, but it is really, really narrow. This narrow heat affected zone can be considered as advantage. Among all the other thermal cutting processes, laser cutting has the highest hardness peaks or ranges in this narrow heat affected zone. So when cutting high carbon equivalent value grades, like SIDUR 500, for example, we get the microstructural changes in the heat affected zone as shown on this figure. We have the white region on the picture or in the microstructure and this region is quenched region. We have microstructural and mechanical changes there and they appear only 0.5 millimeter away from the cutting edge. And in this region we can detect high peaks of the hardness. For example, we have 500 Brunel grade, and this grade can reach the hardness of more than 570 Brunel close to the cutting edge. And if we are doing an additional bending on, on, on those pieces cut from the plate, we recommend to remove the heat affected zone, zone with the angle grinder and also to use larger bending radius for bending as it is recommended in our data sheets. On the next four pictures, you can see some examples when the setting on, or the settings on the laser machine are not adjusted as they should be. So even though the, the thickness of this plate is only eight millimeters, we can see the separate cuts and this is not acceptable. The next, the next topic of this webinar will be about the preheating. So, the preheating methods and requirements are the same for welding and the same for the cutting process. And always when we cut or weld SIDUR and CIMAX steels, it is recommended to take preheating into, into serious consideration. Because with the preheating, we raise the temperature of the base metal before cutting or welding operation. It is one additional operation in the workshop and due to this, also the manufacturing costs increase. But this crucial step can pay off if there is high risk of cracking on the cutting edges. So the higher the thickness, the higher the carbon, and the higher, higher the carbon equivalent value, the more care is necessary. Preheating, of course, is crucial step of cut, is crucial step of cutting only when we are doing the thermal cutting processes. And preheating is typically not practiced before laser, uh, laser jet cutting, mostly because of the thicknesses of the plates. So with the laser jet cutting, we are mostly limited to approximately 25 millimeters. We also have to point out some important factors why we should practice preheating. First one, maybe. So if the preheating is used properly, we reduce the cooling rates in the area near the cut edges. So hydrogen, as a result of cutting process, has more time to escape from the material, resulting in minimized risk of crack appearance. 
Then the second one, internal stresses are reduced because the temperature gradient in the steel plate is also reduced. Then the third one, the thermal stresses during and after process are reduced. The fourth one, if we want to thermally cut high carbon equivalent value grades with high thickness, in order to avoid cooling cracks, we should take preheating into serious consideration. It just it does not mean that those grades cannot be cut by thermal cutting, but I just want to tell you that we have to follow instructions given from this from, from, from the producer of the plate. And the last reason maybe is that with the preheating, we also reduce the hardening effect in the heat affected zone due to the reduced cooling rates. So when we are talking about how to measure those preheating temperature, we have a standard, so ISO standard, which talks about the importance of preheating prior to cutting or welding operation. So we have three methods available to measure preheating temperature. My first recommendation, and I think also recommendation of other steel producers, is to use thermomelting crayons. The second option is a thermocouple contact unit. And if possible, try to avoid the third option. This is the use of infrared thermometers. Why is this important to, to know? Because before infrared measurement, we need to adjust the emissivity coefficient of the material. And of course, this coefficient depends on the surface condition. So it is different for the painted surface as for the, let's say, polished surface or for milled surface. And due to this, we get an error in measurement, which can, of course, have negative effect on cutting or welding. I also recommend that you should never measure the temperature directly on the cutting line. So typically, and also according to standard requirements, preheating temperature should be measured approximately 50 millimeter from the line of the cutting. It is also recommended to do the preheating evenly all over the surface. So we started something about the preheating. So how to measure and where to measure temperature. Now I have to tell you something about the methods that are used for preheating. Modern workshops and industry can choose between different types of preheating equipment. But even though I have some experiences that some of our customers use inconsistent use of preheating, in nine out of 10 occasions, only a really narrow area close to the cutting line is preheated. Despite our recommendations to preheat the, the plates over the surface and also over the volume evenly. Typically, customers use open flame units, as it can also be seen on this figure on this slide. In this case, we only put a plate on the table, which has special nozzles for burning gas. I think this, the, this preheating method is quite inefficient process, but mostly used in the workshops. So the operator just have to be skilled with some experiences to achieve the best temperature uniformity. On industrial level, also, we can use different furnaces. In this case, we have the best uniformity of the temperature all over the volume and surface of the plate. Furnaces are also the best option, I think, for really thick plates with a thickness, let's say, more than 60 millimeters. In the next part of the webinar, we, have, we also have to say something about typical failures on the cut edges. So cracking is, I think, the most frequently detected failure when thermal cutting of high strength, low alloy steels of high thickness is not done according to the manufacturer's recommendations. The producers of high strength, low alloy steel, like construction or wear resistant steel grades, would just like to inform the final users about this major failure. 
It is typically detected when we have cross-section of the following factors. The first one is too low preheating temperature when we are using the thermal cutting process. The second one is high hydrogen content in the area close to the cut line, like when we have wet plates which were stored outside from the workshop. The third one is high cooling speed of the part after cutting. And the last one, low quality of the cut edge, which was already discussed before. You probably know the expression chain of events. So the same thing is here with the cutting. So cracking mostly does not appear only due to one reason. But this one reason, in combination with all other factors, can lead to a failure, so the cracking of the plate. Maybe at this point, some of you would just like to ask me how to achieve slow cooling after the cutting process. So slow cooling speed after thermal cutting can decrease a risk of crack formation on the cut edges. So on industrial level, typically multiple pieces of the same size are cut from the mother plate. And in this case, slow cooling can be achieved if the pieces are stacked together after cutting, like it is shown on the picture on the right side of the slide. If we cut only one piece from the plate, the slow cooling speed can be achieved when they use, when, if we use the fire-resistant insulation blanket. We also recommend to allow the parts to cool down to room temperature. And the best results can be achieved if the customer has a chance to cool down the pieces in the furnace. But I know that most of you do not have all those options. But in this case, so in this webinar, I think it is important to inform you about the best, the best processes and the best options. Through the webinar, I think that microstructural and mechanical changes in the region close to the cutting line were mentioned several times. They appear only when thermal cutting process is used, so not during the cold cutting process. On this slide, we have an example on SIDUR 400 grade, which was cut with the plasma cutter. As seen, we have a quaint zone with hardness of more than 500 vickers and this region with high hardness is approximately 0.2 millimeter wide. The next region, this is the region between both red lines, is so-called tempered zone. This zone has much lower hardness. But in this region, we detect high deviation of hardness, where the minimum is at approximately 340 brinelli. And from this zone, the hardness raises to the base metal level of approximately 400 vickers. So we recommend to remove the white zone on those parts of the cut edges where the bending will be done additionally. This white zone, which is, I said, only 0.2 millimeter wide with high hardness and low impact toughness, is much more prone to cracking and therefore can act as a crack initiator. The next slide is more for the construction engineers who are defining the shape of the parts cut from the SIDUR or CMAX high strength low alloy steels. From the faculty on, we know the sharp corners in the form of a letter V or L work as a crack initiator. So therefore, we recommend to use circular shapes. We also recommend to do the circular corner trimming on the intersections of straight lines. So if some sharp edges remain on the plate after cutting, maybe due to the cutting of the pieces with sharp corners, we suggest to shorten the plate with the straight line before the plate goes back to stock. This operation should be practiced if the plates are stored outside during the winter period. On the next picture, I would just like to show you why it is important to have skilled technical operators before performing the cutting works. An example shows how not to do the thermal cutting. Photos were taken on our SIDUR 500 grade with thickness of only 8 millimeters. We can see two main failures. 
The first one is so-called leading or start point of the cutting. As you see, the leading of the laser jet remains in the part and therefore can act as a crack initiator. The second one is 90 degree angle at intersections of straight lines. So if possible, in this case, it was really possible, please use circular shapes at those intersections. In the last part of this webinar, we will just go through the examples of preheating temperatures. So minimum preheating and maximum interpass temperatures for CMAX are defined with the table shown on this slide. We will not go into the, into the details of this table, but I would just like to show you how to read this table. For example, we can find out that CMAX 700 grade can be cut at room temperature if thickness of the plate is up to 25 millimeters. So this thickness, 25 millimeters, is also the maximum thickness to be cut by most of the laser cutting machines. With the increase of plate thickness, also the minimum preheating temperature increases. We also do not recommend to use thermal cutting processes on CMAX 900 or CMAX 1000 grade at room temperature. With the preheating of only 75 to let's say 100 degrees C, we are safe from crack formation. With this range of temperatures, we also remove all the moisture which is still present on the plate surface, especially if the plates were stored on the open stock outside during the winter or rainy period of the year. CMAX grades are suitable only to operate at room temperatures. So it means that if we go with the preheating over the recommended temperatures, the drop of mechanical properties may be expected. I have one example here. One example can be seen on, the, on this diagram where the S960 grade was tempered at different temperatures for one hour until we are in the range up to 175 degrees C, no drop of tensile strength is expected. Once we go up or over 200 degrees C, the permanent drop of tensile strength is to be expected. The same situation is with the preheating for SIDUR grades. So SIDUR 400 and SIDUR 450 grade can be cut at room temperature until thickness of the plate does not exceed 20 millimeters. And in order to cut plates in the safe region where no cracking is to be expected, you should follow the recommended temperatures according to this table. For all SIDUR grades, the maximum temperature of preheating should not exceed 225 degrees C. As it was explained before for CMAX steel, the drop of mechanical properties can also be expected for SIDUR grades. I will show you just one example. On this diagram, we can see the effect of tempering where the study was done on SIDUR 450 grade. For this grade, typical surface hardness in our delivery condition is between 420 to 470 Brinell. This hardness range is stable until the material temperature is in the range up to, let's say, 225 degrees C. If the temperature is higher, so the hardness drop appears. And if we are doing preheating in the range of, let's say, 400 degrees C, the hardness of the steel drops to only 400 Brinell. So what it means? It means that we do not have the 450 grade anymore after the cutting process. So with these tables, the first part of the webinar is over. And I think that most important points to be followed for safe cutting were clearly presented to all of you. Of course, if necessary, our technician uh, or our technical team in the sales can help you with some instructions if they are needed. Maybe you all also have some questions that came to your mind during the webinar and you are really free to ask. So my colleague, Mr. Anger, 
maybe he already has some questions from from this part of the webinar thank you andre for comprehensive view on cutting recommendations for cedar and cmax steel segment first let me say that um, our sincere apologize for platform technical video sharing issues it's a one-time problem and we promise to be visible and looking good on next webinar in this series. So Andre, of course, we have a couple of interesting questions from the audience. So let me start with the first one. Mike is asking, as you said in the last slides of presentation, the material properties like yield strength and tensile strength decrease. Would you please help me if there is a chance to restore the material properties on original values as they were in a delivery condition? Yes, it is, I think, nice question or important question. So it is possible to restore the material properties, but mostly not in your workshops because the proper mechanical properties of the steel are achieved through the proper heat treatment process where we have let's say exact control over the temperatures, time on the temperatures, and also over the cooling speed. And this is done in our production process on special heat treatment lines. So I would say that it is in your workshops, it is really impossible to, to, to restore the properties back to original values once you exceed the recommended temperatures. I hope it was helpful to, 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 uh, to answer it. So we have another question from Milan. What happens with impact toughness if we exceed maximum recommended preheating and interpass temperatures? Interesting question. Yes, yeah, some people maybe think that that more is better. So if we go with the temperature over the recommended temperatures, I would just like to inform you that this has also a negative effect because negative side of high strength low alloy steels is so called temper embrittlement range. So this is the range which is typically above the recommended preheating temperature. This range also depends on the chemical composition of the steel, but typically for high strength low alloy steels appear between approximately 350 to 500 degrees C. And if you are doing the preheating in the recommended range, there is no need to be afraid that the material will, will decrease in toughness. But if you are doing the preheating in this range, so between 350 to 500 degrees C, then you can expect the drop of, uh, of impact toughness. And this is not, uh, this is not acceptable for, for, for the final steel producers. Andre, John is interested, which shielding gas do you prefer for laser cutting, oxygen or nitrogen? Also, I think quite <laughs> nice question. I'm, I'm sure that most of you who are doing the, the cutting work in the workshops have some experiences. In, on industrial level, both cutting gases can be used on a high strength low alloy steels. But if you really want, let's say, perfect and good quality of the cutting edge, then the nitrogen should be selected as the first option. The difference between both cutting gases, so between oxygen and nitrogen, starts on, let's say, chemical level. So, if you use oxygen as a cutting gas, then the laser melted the steel and oxygen acts as the effects or this oxygen affects the burning speed. So if you are using oxygen, the metal actually burns during the cutting. So the more oxygen we provide to the cutting region, the higher the cutting speed. On the other side, Nitrogen works as a shielding gas. So laser beam, laser beam actually just vaporizes the melt, which is then blown away with the high speed nitrogen. So nitrogen as a cutting gas. 
So if you use nitrogen as a shielding gas, then the cutting speed depends mostly on the power of the laser beam machine. I hope that this was clearly presented to, 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 the, to the users of the laser jet cutting machines. Maybe we have some other questions. So far, no other questions. So um, I would once again uh, ask our audience to, if they have some questions, they can just write in chat and we will we will answer them. So Andre, we don't have any other questions. So. Um, at this point, I would like to to thank everybody for uh, attending this webinar. First in this series, we will send you an invitation for next webinar in series, which will start on Monday, 11th of October at the same hour as today. So from 2 p.m. forwards. Today webinar is recorded and will be possible to get on our website in the coming days. So, Andre, do you have some closing remarks regarding this first webinar? I just want to 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 say thank you to all of you who are listening to to this webinar, and I hope that we will be together in the on the next webinar, which will be about the welding procedures used on the uh, high strength, low alloy steels and on for uh, wear resistant steels. Maybe you, if you will have some questions, you will have a chance to ask me again. So until now, I'm happy that we were together and have a nice day. Thank you also from my side and have a nice day, everybody.